What's going on y'all? I'm Nathan Rich with Southern Salt Kayak Fishing and today we're going over one of the best flounder rigs that you can use, period. And I'm gonna show you an easy, simple way to tie it. Uh, and it looks a little something like this. It's just a real simple tandem rig. So it only takes a few seconds to tie this thing. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get into it. But before we do that, I got some Southern salt hats, both in navy blue and white. And then I got the OD green and black tactical looking hat. If y'all are interested in purchasing these hats, um, we're gonna go ahead and do a pre-order. So hit us up at Southern Salt Kayak Fishing on Facebook and uh, let us know that you're interested and we'll get your hat ordered. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, y'all, getting into this rig, I got some orange 550 cord here so y'all can see the hardest part, which is really not that hard at all, but you can see how to tie uh, a dropper loop or, in my case, a butterfly knot in the middle of this line, okay? So the first thing you wanna do is take your spool of leader and you want about four feet of line. So go ahead and pull four feet of line off of your leader. Once you got four foot of line pulled off, you wanna go directly in the middle of your leader. And what you wanna do is lay that leader in the palm of your hand. Now, once you got that laid in the palm of your hand, all you wanna do is take your tag in, come across and around your hand, forming an X right there in the palm of your hand. Then you're gonna run one more time around your hand, running directly beside the line you just ran. Okay, so you should have three lines in the palm of your hand. What you wanna do is pull the middle line, pick it up and slide it under the other two lines. Once you've done that, hold on to that little loop right there, pull your two tags and boom, you have now formed a butterfly knot or a dropper loop in the middle of your leader. That is the hardest part of tying this rig, which in my opinion, I don't think that's very hard at all. all right. Now, getting this 550 cord out of the way, you should have some leader with a loop in the middle, right? So we have our dropper loop. Now, we're gonna take that dropper loop and we're gonna pinch the end of it. Depending on how big your leader is, it might be kinda hard to push it through your jig head. Um, but all you're gonna do is pinch the end as tight as you can and you're gonna push it, pushing that loop through the eye of your jig head. All right. Once you pushed it through, all you're gonna do is pull that loop through, wrap it around your jig head, running the hook through it, okay? And then you're gonna pull back on your main line, locking that jig head in place in that loop. All right, once you have your jig head connected to your loop knot, then you're gonna take your line, decide which side you want to be your main line and which side you want to the other jig head to go on, okay? Um, in this case, I wanna use the longer end as my main line connection, and then I wanna use the shorter end to connect my last jig head to the knot. Now to connect that, I'm gonna put a loop knot in there to give it a little bit of free mobility. Um, and all I'm gonna do is put a square knot in that line. Once I have my square knot right there, I'm gonna push my tag through the eye of my jig head. And I'm gonna seat that square knot right down there at the base, just like that. All right, then I'm gonna put a couple of twists in there, four or five or so. Once I got that, I'm just gonna push my tag end through my square knot, holding my tag in, pulling my main line, and securing, because this is 40 pound leader, it's gonna be a little bit tougher, but securing a good loop knot and then cutting off our tag. All right, and then what we have formed is a good tandem rig right there. Obviously, we got BG heads on there. We got heavy leader. It's going to look something like this. All 
Now this is using 20 pound leader right here, which is what I recommend if you're fishing deeper water, uh, like bridge pilings and things of that nature, go to 30 pound leader. Just because you're in deeper water, you're gonna be using heavier jig heads, you got a lot more current, and there's a lot more stuff down there that can get you broke off. So you wanna be able to apply more pressure to those fish. 30 pound leader will uh, be what you need. With that being said, for most other applications like fishing grass and rocks and things of that nature, 20 pound leader will be fine. Now, the other thing you have to take into consideration is what bait am I gonna put on my jig heads and what size jig heads am I gonna use? So the depth of the water is going to typically determine what size jig heads you're gonna use. The depth of the water is typically deeper water is gonna have more current, be more resistance, and you want your bait to be on the bottom. So if I'm in water over, I would say if I'm in water over five feet, period, I'm going with a 3 8 ounce to a quarter. All right, if I'm in water over 10 feet, I'm going 3 8 to a half ounce jig head. Uh, but for everything else, I'm gonna be a quarter to an eighth ounce. If I'm fishing grass lines, which y'all see me do a lot of, it's definitely gonna be an eighth ounce because I'm only pitching that lure into a foot of water. You know, I don't need a quarter ounce jig head. An eighth ounce is gonna keep me on the bottom as I'm retrieving that lure back to me. So if I'm fishing grass lines, sandbars, shallow points, I'm gonna stick to a quarter to an eighth ounce. If I'm going uh, to fish docks, which are typically gonna be in that three to five, maybe a little bit deeper range, then I'm gonna be anywhere from a quarter to three eighths, depending on the current and uh, the deeper, obviously we're moving into that three eighths. Now, if I'm fishing bridges that are heavy current, you're looking at 10 feet or more, three eighths to a half ounce. Now that we talked jig head size, now we need to discuss what type of artificial do you wanna put at the end of your rig. Nine times out of 10, I would say gulp swimming mullet or gulp jerk sheds is gonna be about the best thing you can use. Now, with that being said, okay, if I have a lot of croakers in the area, they're gonna be tearing my gulp up. It's not gonna be worth it. You're not gonna catch any flounder. You're just gonna get hammered by gulp. And at the end of the day, you're just gonna lose a lot of lures and spend a lot of money catching nothing but croakers and pinfish. So um, if you're fishing rocks and docks, you're gonna have a lot of croakers and pinfish. Gulp is probably not a good idea. Um, if you're fishing grass lines, gulp is a great idea because those areas typically don't have as many croaker and pinfish like rocks and docks do. Um, so I would use gulp if you intend on fishing marshy areas or shallower water. Gulp swimming mullet, gulp jerk sheds. Um, now for docks and bridges and deeper water where you got a lot more bait fish, I would go with really any kind of uh, curly tail grub would really work well. Egret wedge tail mullets actually work phenomenal. Um, I've caught my biggest flounder to date on an egret wedge tail mullet. Uh, but yeah, I mean, soft plastics are soft plastics really. You know, when you're talking about targeting flounder, it's more about getting the lure close to the flounder because that flounder is going to eat just about anything. It doesn't care if it's a jerk shad or if it's a grub tail, right? If that, that flounder is sitting there for one reason and that's to ambush prey. So if you're sitting there and you're bouncing in its area, chances are you're going to pick up a flounder. Um, but having some extra scent does help secure uh, that hook set and, and make sure that that flounder has a good hold on that lure. So gulp does work well. But once again, if you're fishing rocks, docks, bridges, they have a lot of bait fish, gulp's not gonna work for you. But that's today's video. I hope this was helpful. If it was, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We put out content like this all the time. Comment with any questions you may have. And until next time, tight line, see y'all.